In this video, we're going to solve exercise 12 in section 2.2 of Folland's book. This exercise uses the monotone conversion theorem, so if you haven't, check out that video before. Remember that if these videos are helpful, you can donate with a link in the description of the video a coffee to support the channel. So let's start with the video. We have f, a non negative and measurable function, such that the integral over the entire space is finite. So here I didn't even say it, but we are assuming that we're working on some space x m mu, a measure space. Now the integral here is over the entire space and it's finite. We have to prove that under this condition the set of all the points where the function is infinite is a null set. This means that mu of this set is zero and that the set of all the points where the function is positive this function is non-negative, so always, for every x, f of x is greater than or equal to zero. And the set, then, where the function is positive is sigma finite. So let's remember what sigma finite meant. It means that there exists some sets, let's call them e1, e2, and so on. So a countable family of sets that are with finite measure and that their union form the entire set, in this case the set where the function is positive. So the union over all n's of en has to be equal to the set we want to prove is sigma finite. So we have to prove these two things. Let's start with this one and then focus on the second one. Let's remember what this is. So the integral of f. I'm integrating in the entire space and there is a particular set here that I kind of want to treat separately. So I can write this integral as the sum of the points x where the function is smaller than infinity plus the integral of all the points where the function is infinite. Well, obviously these two sets form the entire space, so this is a trivial equality. Now this hypothesis says that this is finite. And if this set had positive measure, so if all the points where the function is infinite had positive measure, then this integral would be infinite, because this measure notices that there are a lot of points, because it has positive measure, where the function is infinite. And, well, the integral of infinite, because we're only integrating on these points, is obviously infinite. So, what this first part of the problem says is that this set has to be zero, because otherwise this integral could not be finite. So, what we're going to do is suppose, by contradiction, that this doesn't happen. That is, that the measure of this set of all the x where the function is infinite has some positive measure. We want to try and work with all this and get an absurd. But now, well, I just said that this hypothesis was going to work badly in this term of the integral. But we can't just integrate a function with an abstract measure because we don't know anything about this measure or about the function. We have to use the definition of integral and that is done in our video about integration with simple functions. Now on this set, let's call this set E. On this set, the function is infinite. So there is a trivial simple function that will grow to f on this set. Well, we can just take phi of x, phi n of x, a sequence of simple functions that are just going to be n. So obviously phi n is less than or equal to phi n plus 1. This is for every x, so phi evaluated in x. And on e, 
on the set where the function is infinite, because these functions are growing to infinity with n, then phi n grows to f. And here again let me just remark that this only happens on e. It will not probably, we don't know what the function is, but it probably won't happen where the function is finite. Now on the set where the function is infinite, well any sequence that grows to infinity will grow to f. So now let's calculate this last integral. Now what is the integral over e, so over all the points where the function is infinite, of f? Well, what we're saying here is that the limit when n tends to infinity of phi n is equal to f. So I can just replace f with this limit. And now I have a monotone sequence of functions, in this case simple functions. Well, I can just use the monotone conversion theorem. The monotone conversion theorem, we didn't need to have simple functions, but it doesn't matter, in this case we do. And we do because we don't know how to integrate any other thing other than simple functions. So using the monotone conversion theorem, we can pull the limit out of the integral. And now we are integrating on a set E a simple function. Well, we're gonna have the limit when n tends to infinity, and this integral, because the simple function is just n on the set E, each of these functions is gonna have the value n times the measure of the set E. This is because here we only have one set. If it was split over several E's of i's, then we would have a sum. But in this case, it's this it's just the value of the function phi in the set where it's taking that value. And now we're calculating the limit when n tends to infinity of n times a number. But now, what is e? Well, we said that e was the set of all the points where f of x was infinite. But now remember, we said that this point had positive measure. So I'm taking the limit of n times something that's positive, something that's not zero. Well, because of this assumption, this has to be infinite. So now we have that the integral over all the points where the function is infinite is infinite. Well, but because of this equation, then we have that the integral of f also has to be infinite, and this is a contradiction. Well, that finishes the first part of the problem. Now let's try and prove that this other set is sigma finite. So we have to find these sets with finite measure and that the union form this set. We want to work then with this set, the set of all the points where the function is positive. And I want to somehow create a set such that the union is this thing right here. Well, what I can do is think about a way of approximating this zero with something that depends on n. So what I can do is consider en to be the set of all the points such that the function is greater than 1 over n. Well, this is just some set, and it's easy to see that the union over all the ends of these sets is equal to the set that we want. Because I'm taking f to be greater than one number that's going to zero. So at infinity, we're taking all the points where the function is positive. Here, let me be a bit more precise. So now, all we need to show is that these sets have finite measure. So let's think about this set for a minute. It's the collection of all the points where 1 over n is smaller than f. And this only happens 
in this set so when I take this function the characteristic or indicator function times 1 over n on this set en this is always smaller than f in this set this is just because of the definition of the set en so now what happens if we integrate I mean this is one function and this is another one so integrating on both sides we will have the integral of 1 over n chi en t mu and this will be less than the integral of f d mu now I can just take the 1 over n outside of the integral and so let's think about this thing for a minute this integral the integral of a characteristic function this is the same as integrating on this set but integrating one with respect to a measure mu on a set is exactly the same as calculating the measure of that set so what this inequality says is in fact that the measure of en over n because i have this one over n multiplying is smaller than the integral of f but now we know that this integral is finite so it's just a number well then the measure of en is going to be smaller than multiplying by n n times this finite number and this is also finite for each n we're not taking any limit it's just fix an n and see if the measure of en is finite well it is because of this n is going to be a fixed number this integral is another fixed number and finite so the product is also finite so we have that the measure of these sets is finite and that the union of these sets form the set that we wanted to see so this implies that the set of all the points where the function is positive is sigma finite and with this we finish proving the exercise